and we're live. Okay, then welcome everyone to the KCP community meeting. Um, as usual, we have a code of conduct um, and we are now following the CNCF code of conduct. So please be excellent to each other and please follow that code of conduct. Okay, then um, we don't have many topics on the agenda. Let me share this real quick. Um, so we had this topic on the agenda last time, but unfortunately Mike needed to leave before we were able to discuss it. So I would just bring this up again uh, for discussion again. And Mike, the stage is yours. Okay. And I'm sorry, I just realized there were some edits uh, or updates recently that I haven't had time to read and understand. Um, but I'll just outline the use case, uh, which is I run a KCP server in a, um, well, just for example, it's not the only example, but suppose I'm running a KCP server as workload in a Kubernetes cluster, and I need to access that KCP server from somewhere outside that Kubernetes cluster. Suppose, for example, that's a Kubernetes cluster in a cloud. So the way I reach it from, and I need to be able to reach it from all over the world. So um, the, the clients that are scattered throughout the world, they use a domain name that the cloud provider provides to me for getting uh, you know, through some of their cloud networking GORP uh, to some sort of ingress or route or whatever in the Kubernetes cluster, uh, ultimately into the pod that's running the KCP server. Um, of course, the KCP server, and I want to run other stuff in, the, in that uh, Kubernetes cluster that is using the KCP server that doesn't go out and come back in through the cloud front door, right? Because that's slow and expensive. So I want to be able to configure my KCP server in such a way and use it in such a way that there are nearby clients that access it in the you know efficient local way and distant clients that access it in the, the general way. I ah Stefan, you have your hand um, up. Yeah I, I reference this example from, from Cube if you scroll uh, up or down where is it this one yeah. So they, they had something like that where they uh, categorize the clients by CIDR and then there's a different server address depending which IP the client has. That's probably not what we need here, but um, that's the idea. So uh, if you look into a workspace, I think what we use today is a URL, right? The external URL. And that one comes originally from the shard, I think. So um, the big question is, how can we detect in which zone, if we use the word zone for that, um, the client is? Like um, if you're in zo zone A and you want to go to another workspace which lives on a different chart, choose the right address. This is the problem we have, right? And Well, the um, problem is I, I need different uh kube configs to begin with right into handy yeah that's what, that's what i mean like when you start from one like you're in zone a and you you work a, a walk around with your ws command and then there is a switch to another shard then we have to know which of those shard names make sense and if if you switch to another region or cloud provider in this moment i mean it, it might be that previously um, you were connected like with the external name and now you're in this internal zone because it's nearby. So it's tricky. I mean, just saying um, to model that is. Yeah, something. so let me come at it from a different angle. Um, so I'm not really concerned. I'm not trying to ask about um, the case of moving a KCP server from one region to another. I'm not trying to talk about the case of a sharded system where the shards live in different regions. Uh, in fact, right now, I'm not even using sharding uh, or front proxy. I'm just using a bare KCP server. So very operationally, what's going wrong for me right now is that <coughs> when I make a kube config, today I'm supporting it by the following hack. Um, 
And, and but one thing to not forget is today the KCP server has all the same options as the Kube API server for all the relevant stuff, except one. One very relevant one has been carved out and is not supported by the KCP server. And I forget exactly what, which one it is, but it was specifically designed and it's in the Kube API server, is explicitly not supported in the KCP server for controlling how it advertises itself. Uh, and due to the lack of that, I adopted the following hack, which is um, I take the kube config, you know, let the KCP server start. I, I read its kube config, and for the clients that are farther away, I edit the kube config, um, replacing the host and port uh, that, that's in there for the kube, con, uh, you know, for the clusters. And right in kube config, there's a cluster concept, right, which has server URLs. So I go into those server URLs, replace the host and port with the external host and port that you know comes in through the ingress into the cluster and so on. Um, and I can use that, um, and I can even do uh, so. The, and I give that kube config to the external clients, and they can even issue commands to like change workspace. But where it falls down and crashes and burns is right. So I can do things like as long as everything's under root, uh, it all works fine. Um, the flipping between workspaces works okay because it's just kind of renaming contexts and and clusters. It doesn't have to make any new ones, so it's it it that'll the, my hack stays in place. Where things crash and burn is when the user issues the command kubectl workspace tilde to to switch into and create his home workspace. At that point, the workspace plugin. Um, does something that you know consults the server to create a new uh, cluster or server URL or something, and that's based on what the server knows about itself. And my hack has now disappeared. Uh, and I should mention, by the way, this is using uh, release 0 0.11 of of KCP. If that makes any difference, can you can you con can you confirm that the, um, the workspace plugin? So you said it doesn't change the host name. Is this correct? So it, it uses the same, but appends something else, basically. No, no, it completely replaces the host and port. No, not in the tilde case, in the normal dot dot, or if you enter. I'm sorry, right, way. yes. In the normal case of navigating around an existing tree, uh, it does not modify the host or port. OK. So I, I, I remember the, 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 the tilde was a redirect, I think, if I remember right, right? It's 301 or something like that. So maybe the plugin can be just a bit more clever and ignore the host name and just keep the old host name. Uh, so MJ had his hands raised earlier. And did you still want to mention something? No, just a question. So when you output the workspace as output itself, uh, the URL in the workspace uh, status field is that is that with an IP address like internal one or it's uh, using the some external notation? It's like what's what's interesting is like that we have that flag external host name, which basically is intended to to help internals in KCP to form the URL for the virtual workspaces, which basically was, as much as I remember, plugin relies on the status virtual workspace URL generated. So I'm just wondering what's in your case, in your configuration. Well, if yeah, you're asking Mike, me, um, when I experimented using KCP release 0 0.11, I found that when I set the external host name, that was used by all clients in all cases. Right? And I don't want to send even the clients in the KCP server we're using the external host name to reach the come back into the KCP server. And I certainly don't want to send all the clients back through the cloud front door. So one one question. Um, do you have control of the in cluster DNS um, of the Kubernetes cluster? Where well, it's, a regular it's a regular Kubernetes cluster. So, you know, the services are a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, I mean the core DNS in specific. If you're, if it's like not a managed. Oh, you mean can I hack what this, how the DNS server behaves? Yeah, um, yeah that, that, 
that would be my like workaround for now until we come up with a solution that you set the external host name, um, the flag um, to the you know front door DNS name, and within the cluster, the name just resolves to the internal IP address. So I haven't tried that. Um, is it easy with core DNS with a regular DNS server in Kubernetes clusters? Is it easy to add um, some kind, some kind of mapping or override? Uh, that's a pretty solid question. Um, so I, I know that I, some. I, I, I think this is all. This is all misguided. Um, it's, it, that's just a bug of the plugin. If you go to the plugin code, like in, in package, CLI plugins, workspace plugin, there's a case, yeah, package, CLI plugins, workspace plugin, and QConvec, line 213. So if, if you if you look in the other cases, not that one, everywhere, everywhere else we keep the URL like 10 lines above, for example. We keep the old uh, URL, we just add something to the um, to the path, I think. But in the tilt case, we we do more, like we get this object and we use the URL from that object directly. And of course, this has a different name, uh, different uh, different host name. If we took the same logic as above, just takes a pass of that, then we are good, I think. Well, that would be great, right? This, the smaller, more confined change is yeah. obviously the easier change and doesn't require any architectural change, right? I'm okay with hacking the kube config, right? And handing out this hacked kube config to the more distant clients. Like we, what we have at the moment, um, we don't have the system I described earlier. So we only have one external URL basically. And I think intentionally, we don't replace the host name in all the other cases. I guess so. We have to check the code maybe, but. I think that's like this, under assumption that everything goes through the front proxy and front proxy routes where it needs to go across the shards. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the front proxy has to know all of the uh, clusters anyway. We can think about redirecting if you want to go to, to a different region or something like that. But that's a different topic, I think. At the moment, the plugin is just behaving differently for Tilt. That's a source okay, of the so problem. That should be straightforward change. Thanks. That would okay, be great. So, sir. Uh, essentially, the, the bug is valid. I think uh, we postponed putting its status into the backlog until we have discussed it. I think it sounds like we're all in agreement this this is not consistent with what the plugin does for others, so it's a bug. We should put it in the backlog. Yeah. I, I, I do think that um, this uh, suggestion of some, doing something like this is also interesting, something that we should forget, because while the front proxy should be handling everything, I could also see cases where you have like big setups that might be like really geo-distributed, where you want people to talk to a specific front proxy installation. So you yeah. have front proxy running in the US and you have front proxy running in Europe, and you want people to talk to the to the Europe one. You can either do that with what's it called, global DNS? No, I'm not sure, but where, where like the DNS is giving you different IP addresses, or you could do it with like dedicated host names that change based on your client side, or in this case, Europe and US is probably not a good example. But um, if you have like your data centers and they should be talking to specific front proxies or something, where you know the IP addresses. It's much bigger, of course, a lot bigger. And the plugin is inconsistent. This is the main point at the moment. Yeah, you good. Yeah, could someone help me remember why does Kubernetes even have this? Why does Kubernetes um, need? 
So uh, Kubernetes only has one server. So mm -hmm. this makes a lot of things diff uh, very different or much simpler, of course. Um, I'm not even sure this is used. This is probably from where the old times. I've never seen it. Right. There used years. to be these self URLs, but they're gone now. So yeah. why does Kubernetes even need to know or care how it's addressed? No idea. Maybe it's just forgotten to, I mean, this is part of the self URL and it's just forgotten to be removed. There's also some proxying um, built in, but I think that will be going the other way. So, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, okay, thank you. Um, Mike, if you if you want to point out, I can send you the link to the line of code and you can just do the change. Should be pretty straight, straightforward. Yeah, why, don't you, why don't you just go ahead and drop it in this uh, issue? Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I will. Okay, great. Is there anything regarding this issue, this agenda item that we should discuss? I, I think so we're done. I, I have a question to that. Uh, so. If we keep the host names in, in all the kubectl interactions in the plugin, as we just discussed, what is external host name then used for? We use it to generate URLs for, for KCP. Yeah, it, it shows up, in the, I guess, in the chart and probably also, I mean, in the, in the tilt uh, address, which is basically a workspace, an artificial workspace. And workspaces have that field as well, like they have the URL. So, I guess it's it ends up everywhere there, but it's not really. I mean, I don't think we support the case uh, that Marvin was talking about, where things are distributed and you have to use different ones. Because it felt it's, like all the URLs we use are only internally used, and everything that comes from the outside goes through the one single font proxy. Yes, that's what and I mean. And so maybe the name external host name is slightly misleading if. Like how would you configure this? Is it a domain name, but then you force all the URLs internally, everything to go through the external? If I have a controller that wants to work with an API export and, and takes the, the virtual workspace URL from the API export, that uses the external host name, right? So my okay. controller that potentially runs right next to KCP would by default go through the outside world, to the front proxy instead of talking to like KCP service plus the local. The, the virtual API servers are not proxied in the front proxy. That's okay. different. So remember also that this external host name is a flag inherited from, um, you know, upstream Kubernetes and not diverging more than necessary from it. That is good. Um, and I think uh, it is true that the, the technique I'm talking about, um, hacking the kube config, uh, does not get inherited by anything that is reading uh, from an object, whether it be a workspace object or an API export object. Uh, in my use cases, the controllers that read the export views are indeed in the same kube cluster as the kube servers. So that's okay. Okay. Um, Christoph, maybe take a look on the chart. I think we added that. We had it very early on, but we re added that. Um, and I think there are two URLs at the moment. And we were talking about having a third one for the virtual workspace. Maybe it's there. I don't remember. Because it can be different. It's not the front proxy. It can be in the, in the main process, but it can also be uh, external. Okay. So it must be a third URL. I will take a look. Thanks. OK. Then I think uh, that's it for now regarding that topic. I kind of feel like it's going to come up again, though, um, beyond the bug fix that we are focusing on. OK, um, then 
let's take a brief look here. Let's fix the plugin income system. First, uh, larger, I don't know, uh, how should we say this? Larger is a topic of different post names for client side or might come up again. I don't know. Okay. Um, ben, I added a small topic just to uh, so we can discuss it um, and just like talk about it. CNCF sandbox uh, progress update. Um, I just pinged um, the person from CNCF that was uh, that started our onboarding issue uh, because I haven't heard something back regarding the maintainer onboarding. I sent them a list 10 days ago with all the email addresses of everyone that is a maintainer. I also opened a PR as was on the to-do list and I haven't gotten any feedback to it yet. So I'm not sure if anyone has heard something regarding that. I wouldn't expect it, but Honestly, they were weak and a bit of the KubeCon. I don't expect much, much yeah. coming there from there. I think that that's a uh, that's a that's a fair point. Um, probably everyone at CNCF is very busy. Um, I mean, we we didn't onboard within the month um that we were like hoping for uh but i think we've like provided a lot of information and that some threats are still ongoing um but yeah that that's so far the like all i know about the cncf sandbox progress i'm not sure if anyone else has more insights more information some updates I just update i wrote you in slack already so i, I pinged uh, red hat Josh Bergus in particular, like there's a thread going on with him and with some people from Red Hat. And he said they are on it and it's in the legal department. Um, yeah, nothing we can do, we just have to wait. And I heard uh, the domain, like the move is approved or something. I think they found where the domain is hosted within Red Hat, but I guess it's also blocked by the IP transfer of it. Okay. That sounds like everything is moving, but yeah, we we probably um let, let's see um if we don't hear for a long time regarding maintain onboarding. Uh, maybe we should ask again um, so we can complete uh, the the sandbox onboarding. But yeah, it's it's a very good point. I was not considering that that you know KubeCon uh, probably binds a lot of resources. Okay, is there anything else regarding the CNCF sandbox? I think we have quite a few things. The only thing which I would like to do as fast as possible, I'm not sure if we can, to add our community meetings to the CNCF calendars, because I think that could add additional participation. So we might want to look into that. Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds like a great idea. I suspect that we will have a lot more options regarding these things when we have when maintainers are onboarded and we have the service desk available for us. Okay. Um I think that concludes the sandbox updates. Um while I'm talking, let me quickly check if we have anything to triage. Uh, 
That's actually one new issue. It's more for our own information. It's not an issue. Oh, okay. It's uh, people want this, wa this. Yeah, yeah. People want working on some gap, which might be useful for us in the long run too. Okay. Is anyone aware of this initiative already? I just read it through. I think it's quite useful for integrations. I've, I would be like, because it's a node SIG, I think they're concentrating on a node feature discovery where uh, uh, on top of that, I would add the uh, API feature flags, for example, would be very useful too. Not only node features, but that's uh, I don't know. It's I mean that this looks potentially interesting. Um, I would be interested to see what kind of features would be in this. Um, but I, I mean, if we're, so my understanding of just like scrolling over this, um, it, it like might be nice if this becomes a standard and each workspace just advertises what kind of Kubernetes API or some, what kind of Kubernetes cluster it is. That feels like a cheap win, in my view. Yeah, but I'm uh, totally. I don't understand what kind of features it will be exposed. Like, what's the nodes are a bit like ambiguous. Because like, nodes can be deep GPUs, without GPUs, but the node object already have filled things for that, like uh, resources, and we got to expose these things. So. Um, I would like when you dealing with a clusters, in my opinion, the more important thing is the API feature flags. For example, when you're hooking up to AKS or GKE managed Kubernetes, sometimes you want to know what kind of API feature flags we use, which like features enable, disabled, and things like that. Where node level point is a less, it's a, like a second citizen in that feature flag story. But that's my opinion. I'm going to comment after call to the ticket. Ask him around. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, I think, matching uh, my feelings about it. I would be interested to see what kind of features they want to advertise. Um, because I, I don't have any like specific examples in mind. Because kind of, as you said, you can also do API discovery on a cluster and figure out what's available already. So I'm curious where they want to go. But I think it's a good idea to keep an eye on this. Do we want to, I don't know, as a, as a project, do we want to show interest? Do we want to participate? Any, any thoughts on that? Think for now it's individual. Like if you want to subscribe to this one, you can subscribe, but the issue itself, I don't see point keeping it down backlog. Okay. Yep. And we can go with that. That's the prevailing opinion. Okay. Um do we move this to maybe next or backlog? Backlog probably. Or done? It's like I don't I don't know. I, mean, I don't think I, we, we have said anything. We don't ask I, anything from I would, us. I would just comment that thanks for making us aware we are following um, the progress. Yeah. That's it. Okay. And then just close it or keep it open. Just close it. Uh, uh, 
Um, okay. Okay, good. Then that's it for the triage part. Is there any other business we should talk about? I think at some point we should clean our existing issues. I know we were preparing to migrate to transparent like TMC stuff once. Do you know? Maybe let's pick up that asynchronous in a chat in a in a chat what needs to be done just to clean our house a bit. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Let's let's put that on the chat. I saw some snippets on how to like mass migrate issues. It's a little bit of scripting around the GitHub command line. There doesn't seem to be a built in option. Um, but yeah, I think we can figure something out together and maybe do a test drive, migrate one or two issues, and then have like a big migration going on because we have all the TMC issues labeled, so we, we can move them. Okay. Any other business? Um, maybe I can say a few words on TMC. Uh, so uh, basically the changes that have been made for logical cluster and a CRD uh, seem, seem to, to be effective. So uh, I was able to, uh, to, to get the resources. Um, uh, I've done a bit more modification to connect to the cache server because it was using the, the loopback uh, clients. And uh, so there are still a couple of things uh, remaining to, to, to get it working in, in a layered way. So obviously there, there, there is still the, um, uh, the aspect of the, the uh, sinker uh, connecting to uh, TMC uh, uh, on, on, on top of uh, KCP. Uh, and uh, I hope to, uh, to, 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 to find some time next week to, to make further progress on that. So that connectivity part is, uh, I was I was thinking about a bit and maybe that's we have people online. So because it will be layered on top, it's a separate process, separate container running potentially close to KCP. Is the traffic, is the, is the intention that the traffic should hit, the sync of traffic should hit KCP and they get forwarded to, to TMC process or we want basically, because what we could do is could do the like ingress layer injection. Yeah, so I'm, uh... Right, so the, the, the issue uh, today is that we, we, we have uh, multiple API server, so one, one for uh, KCP and uh, one additional for TMC. And uh, so the syncer needs to, to connect to, to, to both. And uh, yeah, so there is our uh, different option and uh, ideally, if we uh, wouldn't need to, to, to have the, um, the, the API server at the TMC level, then that would be uh, the, the best solution. So that would simplify the, uh, the global architecture. But, uh, probably the, 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 there is a is easier solution in, in between and uh, one uh, idea was to um, to, to, to extend the, the sync target to, uh, uh, to to be able to to configure this uh, second uh, endpoint for accessing uh, TMC, uh, we, which is now a, a separate process, uh, as you mentioned. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, I will need to, to uh, experiment with it, but that it wouldn't be uh, as that would only be a, 
in my opinion, um, uh, a step in between to, to get something uh, working. Uh, because uh, the use, uh, usability uh, the, it, it wouldn't be very, very good for that. Uh, uh, so, so maybe too, too much configuration to, to be done by, by the user. But yeah, so the, uh, at least uh, it's still a, uh, an open item. So just, just just some ideas. Um, there is a virtual workspace you are talking to, right? So, this this yeah. you can com that's what you can completely hide in the sync target. Like the sync target has URLs, right? In the status or something. Yes, yeah, so the, the, the sync target uh, for the bootstrapping is uh, communicating with, with KCP uh, directly, and after that for uh, syncing and done. That's what I mean. Those are the virtual workspaces. Yeah, and, and, and they are created by um, by, by TMC. Yeah, yeah but um, KCP doesn't have to know anything about them. What I'm saying is just put URLs in the sync target so the sync target can know where to find that server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was, um, and um, and the, second, the second thing is about um, Logs and uh, exec and all those sub resources, right? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> what? J just j just some guideline. I don't want that we uh, hack that into KCP. What we could do, we could basically allow to define sub resources for CIDs of API resource schemas, and make the front proxy aware of those. Like, I don't want traffic to KCP and KCP redirecting, this is strange. Mm, yeah, so it okay. should be as far outside as possible from, from the control plane. Yeah. But sub resources, I could imagine that we have them and you can just redirect somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. But, all right, so that's something I, I, I would have uh, later on, on, on my roadmap, so I haven't spent much time with uh, execs uh, uh, and logs because uh, I, I was first to to get something kind of working before being uh, at parity at feature level. But is a, is a missing something like I've seen here when it connects and then sync. it needs to connect to that virtual workspace where the sync target is located basically yeah actually it's connecting to uh tmc we, we which has an api server uh, which is doing a, a redirect to uh to the virtual workspace that has been created in kcp currently and is that is there anything specific there like why why the thinker can talk directly to the virtual workspace? Like it has a cube config for the virtual workspace, virtual workspace, not the virtual, like a, to the workspace itself, not the virtual workspace. That's uh, not enough. I, that's, a, that's a different URL. But the sync target can have two host names, two URLs. One for the virtual workspaces, that's what you are saying, and the cube config to connect to the normal workspace. Okay. Yeah. And currently, and they are statically and static. Uh, the, the, the number of uh, um, up sync and down sync virtual workspace is fixed currently. But uh, I could imagine that we uh, we have TMC creating them uh, when needed, and uh, for each uh, sync targets, maybe that would make the uh, would uh, make possible to, to, to get rid of uh, this uh, connection and API server directly to TMC. But I, I would need to go a deeper look uh, at that. I'm not 100% sure if, if it's possible. Yeah, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm missing a big part of that understanding in that code base to Need to go and read a code. Yeah. 
Okay, so I I just wanted to to to, to give a, a short update of uh, uh, what's happening. So obviously, uh, I have limited uh, time uh, available for that. So it's going slowly, but uh, progressing uh, a bit. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I think it's a common problem. Thank you very much for the update. Um, yeah, sometimes the really charm. Appreciate that. Yep, absolutely. Uh, sometimes the charm. Uh, any other business? Okay. Then I think that's it. I will stop the recording. Thank you everyone for participating.